Hoy tenemos en nuestra segunda parte del programa dos invitados de lujo. Son ni más ni menos que dos integrantes de Deep Purple, su batería Ian Pace y su teclista John Lord. Vamos a hablar de la edición eh, que festeja los 25 años de aquel mítico doble en directo Made in Japan que, como sabéis, está en las tiendas de nuevo con temas extras. La edición española contiene 10 canciones nuevas, 10 canciones nuevas que son viejos hits de esta formación a la cual saludamos. Hola Ian, ¿cómo estás? Hola John, bienvenido a España, eh, bienvenido a Más Metal. Eh, 25 años, parece que fue ayer, ha pasado mucho tiempo. ¿Pero qué queda en la memoria de aquella mítica grabación de Made in Japan? Uh, uh, nothing. <laughs> Nada, algo quedará. It's a long time, eh? Huh? Yeah. Uh, obviously you remember that uh, that long ago Japan was very, very different. It's not the same as Japan now. Um, uh, it was very exotic, very strange and uh, very exciting to be there. Um, and I think the record uh, became what it, you know, what we ended up with by virtue of the fact that it was probably done in Japan where the, the situation was totally different. We didn't have a crazy audience screaming and jumping up and down all the time. That the people actually sat down and listened to the music very quietly, which meant we could actually get a really good recording sound from the room, uh, which I think helps the record a great deal. I don't think that would have happened anywhere else. Eh, sin duda es el disco más grande de la historia del rock, el disco en directo, más enorme. Y Deep Purple es la banda más eh, recordada por todos como un grupo con grandes letras escrita en la historia de esta, de esta historia, de esta movida, el rock duro, del heavy metal. Eh, pero no sé, habéis sacado muchos discos en directo, pero ninguno ha, supura, ha superado a Made in Japan. ¿Por qué? Uh, again, I think, uh... It was just uh, a, a chance uh, happening where everything came together exactly correctly. And other live records, um, you take a chance every time you make a live record. Uh, it just needs one thing to be wrong and you don't end up with that magic uh, mixture. Mm -hmm. uh, something breaks, something blows up, somebody's in the wrong mood, the, the, the room doesn't have a good sound. Um, you really are taking a chance, you know, and you just hope that this will Will make a good record. You can never guarantee. Uh -huh. Es una pena, John, que no existan imágenes. Al menos, yo no sé si, si existen imágenes en vídeo o en cine de la grabación de Made in Japan. Eh, pero tenemos eh, unas imágenes que corresponden más o menos a la misma época, Estocolmo y el tema Strange Kind of Woman. ¿Te apetece recordar aquello? ¿Te apetece presentarlo? Yeah. Um, the, the difference between uh, I mean, nowadays everything is is videoed. I mean, uh, and you you you, you see uh, images with the music. Uh, when we started, images were made in people's minds by the music you made, and video was uh, in its infancy. It was very very young. So uh, we have uh, when I see video from those days, well, it was film, actually, from, from those days. I see five young men that I don't recognize, you know. <laughs> who, who are these strange young guys, you know, doing their thing? Um, I've always found video very uncomfortable because I'm, I, I deal in sound, not in, in vision. I don't, when I play, I shut my eyes uh, and I'm in my own world with these, with the other guys in the band. And I'm not thinking about image and, and physical presence. I'm just thinking about the music. So I find video a difficult, a difficult subject. Um, today, I, I just feel that, that too much is on video. The, the, somehow the, the connection uh, has been established be, between sound and vision, which, if you're not careful, takes away the imagination. And uh, I'm, I'm not a great fan. But of, of video, but you know, it's it's a fact of life now, which it wasn't when we were starting. Muy bien, vamos a ver este viejo tema, Strange Kind of Woman. <laughs> A face of a fancy She left the trail of happiness and misery I loved her, everybody loved her She loved her, everyone gave a good return I tried to 
Eh, John, eh, todo el mundo sabe de Carrerilla la lista de canciones del Made in Japan. Es un disco enorme, evidentemente, casi todo el mundo sabe qué temas contiene. Pero en esta nueva edición, eh, aparte de las canciones en estudio que han visto la luz aquí en España, eh, se incluyen tres temas en directo nuevos que no aparecían en la primera versión original. Ha sido difícil recuperarlos. ¿Qué canciones son? Um, the first time, of course, there was no CD. It was vinyl, and um, so there was a time limitation on what we could use. But also, we only recorded three nights, and we chose in those days what we thought was the best music from the three nights uh, um, and so for this new version we w what we've done is remastered uh, 
some. We've uh, there's some remixes of some uh, other ver different versions of the same tracks in different mixes. But there's also uh, three, I believe, three tracks that were not on the original, which were the encores, uh, and they are a little bit of a different thing. I mean. <laughs> By the time we'd reached the encores, at, at the end of the show, we'd done two hours of, of uh, intense, quite controlled, because we knew we were being recorded, rock and roll. So uh, it gets to the encores and you think, ah, let's, let's go, you know? So the version of Lucille, for example, it, it's, it's fine, but uh, we knew when to start, but we had no idea how to stop. So. <laughs> You can hear this, but w I think it's uh, it's good fun to to be able to hear um, a band playing very very well, but also having fun and uh, getting into the spirit of of the evening. Mm. Uh, I think it's it's good value for money. Eh, Ian, eh, dentro de esa lista de canciones de la vieja versión de Made in Japan, de también de esta actual, aparecen tres temas que yo creo que a todo el mundo cautivan. Eh, me gustaría que me contaras eh, sobre esas tres canciones algo. Eh, High Wister, eh, Smoke on the Water y Child in Time. Yeah. Um, I think the with High Wister, the uh, the fact that it's a really very exciting, interesting rock and roll song is uh, is important. But I think where where we used to put it in the act was also very important. It used to be uh, the starting point, and uh, it is probably one of the most exciting intros to any rock and roll act ever. The fact that it comes from nothing, it starts very quietly, but within 20, 30 seconds, you have this feeling of building power. I think just the the, uh, the location of it, the way it caught people unawares, and the actual power of the song itself, it had to it had to be the come become the classic that it is. Everything about it was uh, just correct, you know. And with Smoke on the Water, we have a track which uh, mm. we, when we recorded it, for us it was just an album track. And it really took an American record executive to say that's a single. We didn't think anything special about it. Uh, which is the way it works. You, you make a record, it's up to people who hear it outside the band to, to make a comment and say, I like that. Mm. The public make hits, we don't make hits, you know. Um, and over the years, it sort of it has become a classic rock an anthem. Um, you, you're thankful you can write one. You wish you could write more. And with Child in Time, I, th I think it, it captured a mood of, of that period in time, asking questions uh, in a slightly ethereal, mystical way, uh, but still keeping a rock and roll heart. Um, it's a different time now, and I don't know whether that song is of this time, but that's not important. I mean, th you say there were three very important tracks, and maybe they still are. Um, that's it. Grandes canciones sin duda, eh, un gran nombre del rock como es Deep Purple, pero debajo de Deep Purple hay cinco señores principalmente. Ya no está Richie con vosotros, eh, tenéis un gran guitarrista, se llama Steve Morse, pero quizás los fans todavía echen de menos un poco a Richie Blackmore. Lo vuestro ha sido históricamente como un matrimonio, eh, te casas con una chica, te divorcias, vuelves a casarte con ella, te vuelves a divorciar. ¿Os volveréis a casar con Richie Blackmore alguna vez? Uh, I don't think that's possible now. Uh, I don't think he would be happy, and I don't think we would be happy. We have a situation with Steve where we know the band will go on stage every night, we know the band will play well every night, we know that uh, there will be no fights, no arguments, uh, there may be a little disagreement sometimes about small points, but. Uh, it's, it's a very diff different feeling to wondering whether there'll be a band the next night or whether, you know, uh, somebody will turn up for an encore when the band has decided, yes, we do one, and one guy says, no, we don't. Um, I don't think we'd want that heartache again, and I don't think Richie would want to be in a situation where he couldn't be free to do exactly what he wants, because I think I get the impression that that really is very important to him now, that he be in total control of what happens on stage and in the studio, and I don't think we can give that to him. 
Ahora el matrimonio con Steve Morse es fantástico y tenemos unas imágenes de la última vez que estuvisteis tocando con él en España, concretamente de la Plaza de Toros de Móstoles, un lugar de la zona sur de Madrid, el 4 de septiembre del año 96. ¿Qué recordáis de la última vez que estuvisteis en España, además con Steve, eh, Steve Morse a la guitarra? Uh... I remember the Spanish people being very kind to us and incredibly kind to Steve. I mean, they accepted him straight away. And let's be honest, when somebody is that good a musician, you, you, you have nothing to do but enjoy what the man can do for you. You know, it's, uh, there's a certain quality which breaks through the norm. You know, he is a special player. And anybody who gets a chance to see him work really is privileged. And we're privileged when we're on stage and get to see him work that close. He is a consummate artist to what he does.